So get this, according to research carried out by the Western Cape Health Department, having diabetes and being older than 50 are far more deadly than having HIV and TB uh, in a person who contracts COVID-19. The report also revealed that people with TB do not have a much higher risk of death than any other underlying health issues. Public health specialist from the University of Cape Town, Mary Ann Davis, joins us now to tell us more about this study. So this got possibly uh, be a big uh, game changer. Let's talk about how the research and the data uh, was collected and done. Um, thanks very much for the opportunity. I want to highlight that this is not strictly speaking research. This is operational data from the Western Cape Department of Health. And uh, the work that we've done has been under the auspices of the Department of Health and not by the University of Cape Town. We will work more formally with researchers to analyze this in more depth going forward. But at the moment, we are sharing this in the interests of transparency as operational data. So what we did as the Department of Health was to look at all of our active public sector patients. So those are people who've had a health care visit at one of our facilities in the last uh, three years. We looked at our adult patients because those are the patients at risk of dying from COVID or having severe COVID outcomes. And among 3.5 million of our adult patients, we were able to then link that data to our COVID cases in public sector patients, about 13,000 of them. And in those patients, we have seen just over 400 deaths. And because we have good data on several comorbidities from our Department of Health data, we could look at what the risk factors were uh, associated with having worse COVID outcomes. Importantly, there are some comorbidities that we don't know a lot about from our routine department data. One of the big ones with respect to COVID is being overweight or having an increased body mass index. And because we don't uh, have good data on that, some of the risks that we have, um, we have spoken about may overestimate for example, the risk associated with diabetes uh, because we're not taking into account that some of that risk might be due to being overweight. Let's expand on what the data revealed when it comes uh, to having diabetes and being older than 50 and also being in your 60s uh, as compared to having HIV and TB for a person who contracts COVID-19. Um, so I think what our data showed was that the biggest risk factors for having poor COVID outcomes were increased age and that this risk, unfortunately, for those of us who are older, increases the older that you get. And um, we, we also showed increased risk with diabetes, particularly if your diabetes is not well controlled. So if your blood sugar is, is not controlled and you're not on treatment. Um, in comparison, we did show a small increased risk with tuberculosis, particularly current tuberculosis and also HIV, but those risks were much less than for diabetes and older age. And what I want to highlight is that the overall risk of death from COVID is really small. The absolute risk is small, particularly for young people. So even if there's a two times increased risk of death, if your overall risk is about 1%, that means your risk of death is probably only increasing from 1% to 2%, which in absolute terms is really not very much. What does this mean in terms of how we uh, proceed when it comes uh, to COVID-19? How do we proceed with this information? What do we do? Well, I think it helps healthcare workers to identify the people who are most at risk of COVID. And uh, in a context of uh, somewhat scarce testing resources to identify those that need to be tested the most um, and also those who might need admission. I think what it also tells us is that we shouldn't uh, neglect our routine healthcare programs. And there has been concern about this in the context of COVID. And so it's really important that we continue to diagnose tuberculosis, that we uh, continue to test people for HIV and for them to continue to take antiretroviral therapy. And probably more importantly than that, that uh, we continue to provide treatment and monitor patients with diabetes and other chronic comorbidities. And, and really the people 
who are the most at risk are the people who have all of the risk factors put together. So uh, if one has a constellation of risk factors, then uh, those are the people that we really need to watch very carefully. You speak about people who need to collect uh, their medications. Uh, we understand that with some people that have HIV, in terms of uh, the lockdown, some were even scared to go to hospitals to go collect uh, their medication because they were scared of being uh, infected. What does this mean where people have not been able to have access to the necessary medications that they needed during this time? So I think that is a concern. I think, um, as uh, has been expressed by, by other experts, if people have stopped taking their medication, it's really important that they uh, restart. And I don't think, I think with appropriate social distancing, the risk of not taking medication is far greater uh, than any risk around contracting HIV, I mean, contracting COVID. And so people certainly should attend health facilities. I know in the Western Cape for people on chronic medication, we've tried as much as possible uh, to provide long-term prescriptions so that people don't have to come to our facilities as often and can even collect their medication in the community rather than having to come to health facilities. But I would really uh, encourage people to continue with their chronic medication as a priority. Mary Ann Davies uh, from the University of Cape Town, thank you very much for your time.